He is one of the most famous, one of the most popular Christian televangelists since the heyday of Billy Graham. I'm talking about Joel Osteen, pastor of America's largest megachurch. Weekly sermons broadcast to millions in close to 100 countries. Say it like you mean it. Are you ready? This is my Bible. New York Times number one best-selling author, more than two million followers on Twitter. Clearly, a lot of people are paying attention to what he's got to say. So, here's what it is. Joel preaches a gospel of self-improvement, of spiritual, emotional, and this is the sticky part for some people, financial well-being. God can bless us in so many ways. He can help you get good deals. And while he has fans like Oprah, Joel, whose father John was a traditional fire and brimstone Baptist minister, has got his critics too. Religious leaders who say he's watered down his brand of Christianity, focused on the wrong teachings, the sort of teachings Joel laid out in his book, A How-To Guide of Empowerment and Success. It's called Breakout. Please welcome Joel Osteen. Hey, George. Hello, Barb. Nice to see you. Thank you. Welcome to the show. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank you, kind pastor. How are how is life? Hey, everything's great. Great to be with you. Are you the uh, the uh, the un, the accidental pastor now? I am. Never dreamed I'd be doing this. No, in fact, didn't you just kind of avoid it as well? I did for um, well my whole life until yeah. I was 36 years old. I, I worked 17 years. You know, my dad was a pastor there in Houston, but uh, I never wanted to be a preacher. I didn't think it was in me. I think that's the main reason I wanted, didn't want to do it, because I'd see my dad get up there and speak in front of all these people, and I, I'd think, I don't have anything to say, and right. I don't want to get up there. Now, let's look at you at, at work here. No, I, I feel like the day of miracles is not over since they got me up here. <laughs> but, <laughs> but my dad called me Monday night, and he said, Joel, are you sitting down? And I thought, oh, no, this is going to be bad news. <laughs> and I thought maybe it was about his health or something. He said, but I want to ask you something and don't pass out when I ask you. And I thought, okay, what is it? And he said, will you preach for me Sunday morning? And I thought, boy, that was bad news. <laughs> oh, boy. That's the first one, right? That was the first one. I mean, boy. I say this with love in my heart, but with that haircut you quite easily could have been opening for Brooks and Dunn. Like, it's I a know. quality cut, man. That was so embarrassing. <laughs> what was I thinking? When you're writing these books and you're sitting down and you're looking at your screen, who are you writing for? Like, who, who's the person? You know, what I do, George, is after the service, I'll meet about a 500 or 1,000 people. You know, just have time to shake their hand, hear their stories, just a little bit. I'm writing to those people. I'm writing to people that, you know, where they live. So when I, when I write, I think, okay, here's somebody, they're having trouble paying their bills, or their wife just got diagnosed with cancer, and just, just trying to write to everyday people. Did you, um, did you anticipate the kind of reaction you were going to get from a lot of the, I don't know the right phrase, Christian establishment? I guess um, maybe it didn't surprise me so much because anytime you have a little notoriety or come out of the pack, it, it's, you're going to have some critics and things. But uh, it's interesting to me that we don't join together as, you know, ministers as much as I, I think because I think we're all on the same team. We just, you know, we play different roles. Right. But I want, I'm sure you've seen this clip of Benny Hinn, which is kind of wrestling. It's like a World Wrestling Federation promo, but watch this, or World Wrestling Entertainment. I wish I could have gone through that TV set and punched him out. I never felt like punching a preacher out. I would have punched him out and said, Lord, I'm sorry. So the he that Benny wants to punch out is he. <laughs> well, that doesn't help anybody, that kind of behavior. No, and I don't know. Benny, we've, we've known Benny Hinn my whole life, so I don't know. I never take anything personally. But, you know, people have different views and different opinions. And, you know, I've learned you get criticized no matter what size you're, side you're on. So, you know, who I am is I am for everybody. Yeah. And I'm not going to go around condemning people and, and, and things like that. And this is a question that I know that my audience, our audience, really connects with as well. And in the abortion debate, which abortion and same-sex marriage became really the big ones, yeah. Not everybody who's against abortion is a Christian. There's lots, there's, that is an issue that you can see why people have different opinions. I've yet to hear a good reason as to why same-sex couples can't get married. From my own family, from other pastors I've interviewed, I've yet to hear a good reason. Does your church have a position on that? Well, you know, I've, I've taken a position on that, and it's not my... It's not my focus, and I hate to get into it because then you just get labeled as haters and stuff yeah. like that. But, you know, it just... I don't, I don't know that I have a, a good answer for you as well. I just go back to my faith is based on the scripture and I 
you know, I see there, it's, it's um, you know, the marriage was between a man and a woman, not against anybody else. So, so your position would be that you'd be okay with same-sex marriage? Well, based on know, that, ba based on I, I, based on this, I am for traditional marriage. Right. I'm not against anybody, though. I'm, I, I just again go back to the, the tr you know, my faith being based out of the Scripture. It shows right. marriage is between a man and a woman. I'm not opposed to anybody else. Though. But herein lies the rub. So it's okay to have that position, but that position on mass tries to influence politicians to prevent other people from having the right. Well, I guess my thing is that's one reason I stay out of the fight. You know, when I'm one vote, I'm not, you'll never hear me from my pulpit. You know, only time this comes up is on, on, on interviews or things right. like that. But, you know, it's a, it's a difficult issue with the whole faith community back, in, back at home, back in America, I guess anywhere, but it's a difficult issue. Stick around more with Pastor Joel right after this. If anyone has an answer to this, it's Joel. Has God turned his back on Tim Tebow? The answer next. Archie and Jack argued for years whether Jesus was black or white. Archie was certain Jesus was white, but Jack was just as certain he was black. As fate would have it, they both died on the same day and raced to the pearly gates to see who was right. St. Peter, they shouted, is Jesus white or black? About that time, Jesus walked up and said, buenos dias. <laughs> You're back here with Pastor Joel. Look, that's a funny joke, but what was the point you were trying to get across there? Yeah, the point is, you know, don't worry about it, you know? Love Which everybody. Is super Buddhist of you. That's the whole thing, right? <laughs> when I watched your sub, I was like, He's, does, does he know he kind of sounds like a Buddhist? Because you're all about these questions that we've been wrestling with over the ages don't matter. They really don't. So many of them don't. Just see the best in people and take them for who they are and give everybody a little space to, to be who God's made them to be. And mm -hmm. you know what? The more, the better. Right. How do you do it when it's a journey for you, too? It is. So you don't, like, you obviously, no one has all the answers. No, so what's it like to counsel people when you're not sure about everything? You know what, I just, um, one of my favorite answers is I don't know. And I think that's important to, to realize that we don't have all the answers. There are key things that I do believe I, I, I do know and, you know, put your faith in God and believe and, you know, take the you know, limitations off of yourself. I mean, like me. Daddy, I can't minister. I don't know how to get up there, but yet that was in me. And so people think, well, I don't have the education. I don't have the background. I don't know the right people. I don't have the funds. I think all those things keep us from rising up and becoming who we're really supposed to be. But you had the system, right? Because you were inside. Look yeah. at this clip here. You're yes, thinking sir. about all these details here. John, show him that reverse shot. That's a, that's a great shot. That's a, you know, it's saying a lot by just saying, you know what, there's a lot of people there. It gives me credibility when I speak. And so those things are important to me. So we choose the right angles and stuff like that, just to, you know, whatever we can do to get the message across. I think when somebody flips by that, they think, well, you know, he's got a lot of people there. Maybe he's got something to say. And there's a lot that goes into reaching people, right? Yeah, there really is. And I, again, I spent 17 years doing the production behind the scenes. I think that's helped me to become a better minister and be more effective. And so uh, it does, I, I'm a big believer in quality production and lighting the cameras and to making the product look good. I, is there a line where you go, this is manipulation? I don't think, well, I never think of it like this. I, I thought you were going to say slick. I don't see it as being slick or something like that, but rather professional. I want it to look as good as anything you'd see on your network or just not subpar. All right, let me ask you a couple of rapid fire questions in our anthropology way, okay? And see what you think. What aspect of modern life do you think Jesus would most object to? based on your, your understanding of him? What he'd we, um, you know, I don't know if it's most, but you know, one thing is the, the suffering, the, you know, lack of, in the, in the day we live in, people, you know, malnourished and all that stuff we see, the refugees and things like that, I think that's what his heart would break for. Um, very serious question here. Has God turned his back on Tim Tebow? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, here's the thing. When he completes a pass, thank God. <laughs> when you get cut from the team, do you still thank God? You know, I've never met him, but uh, he seems like an amazing, amazing man. It's and an incredible force. My mother doesn't know, doesn't know nothing about football, but she Tebowed. She did the thing, right? She, really? she did. And I was like, what are you doing, lady? And she said, Tim Tebow. He's a Christian. I went, it's incredible how, how, 
how much that resonated with people. Unbelievable. What a what an impact. And uh, again, I don't know him, but I like the way he carries himself. And you know, these are tough times. And uh, I think he's a good ball player. It's it's you know, it's obvious that things haven't worked out, but you don't know where God's taking him, and he's going to have a great career no matter what he does. Where do you, and, I, and I recognize how difficult this is to answer because you're on television and you don't really know me, and it's, it's strange, but what are you struggling with? Like, what's the thing that you can't figure out right now that you know is weighing you down? You know, there's some things I look up and I think, you know what, I don't know what the right position is now. Uh, you know, the Bible's not necessarily clear on it to me. You know, it doesn't speak directly to it. And so, you know, that, that uh, I don't know if I'm struggling, but I thought, you know, I would love to have clarity on that so that I know that I'm taking the right course. How do you figure that out? I don't know. I think you just pray, you wait, you be sensitive to what you're feeling in here, and it may not come overnight. A lot of people preach from a position of certainty when the most fundamental part of religion is faith, and there's no certainty in faith. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of things that we don't understand, and uh, you know, I think too these days, people don't want to be talked down to in the old days, being preached at. I mean. Uh, I don't consider myself a preacher. I'm a, I'm a minister. I'm a pastor. I'm there to help somebody. But uh, what's the difference between the two in your mind? Well, I think I just the word preacher to me is man more like my dad was, and I, and I love my dad. But you know, strong this that. But I'm not. I'm going to get up there, you know, when I speak, and I'm going to talk like this and say, hey man, here's here's what I'm talking about today. And so, just um, you know, try to connect in a way. I, 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 like I said, I don't. I think people. Life beats people down enough. I don't want people to come to my meetings and, hey, Joel's going to beat me down too and tell me how terrible I am and what I'm doing wrong. I'm going to tell you, you know, you can rise higher. You can overcome an addiction. You can have a good attitude. You can, you can beat that sickness. That's, that's what they're going to hear coming out of our message. It's a pleasure to see you. Thanks for taking us Hey, on. thanks, George. My pleasure. Great Pastor Joel, we'll see you. We'll be right back.